the Hall, Average Joe Show 2.0. Whenever I can get not only a good friend, but also a, a, a colleague, a guy who I see four times a day in here, <laughs> yeah, I'd love to do that. And you've heard his voice before a number of times, sometimes on MSNBC when he decides to do that. Marty Dobrow, author of a number of titles, sports and social justice related. He's the Distinguished Professor in Humanic, of Humanics at Springfield College this year and has been doing an incredible job um, talking about the great social justice history of our college that we love so much, Springfield College. I mean, heck, five, four of the people in this room right now have very strong Springfield College ties, including two of the interns, Devin and Evan. Uh, Marty is going to oh, be... Oh, Tony, I feel bad, don't you? <laughs> yeah, Tony, you guys are more than welcome to come up and have lunch at, at Cheney if you'd like. That, that, that's a strong tie. Marty would let them in, wouldn't we? Absolutely. We would absolutely let them in. Next Friday, April 17th from 9 a.m. to noon in the uh, Cleveland and Phyllis Dodge Room, the Flint Campus Union, uh, Springfield College is going to be honoring Tom Waddell, cl member of the class of 1959, an Olympic athlete, finished sixth in the, the decathlon, the 1968 Olympics in Mexico City, the famed John Carlos and Tommy Smith Olympics, a civil rights pioneer, founded the gay games, um, really just, I mean, the all-around renaissance man before that was even a thing. Marty Dobrow joins us in studio right now to talk about that event, but also to talk about the legacy of Tom Waddell. Thanks so much for coming in, Marty. My pleasure, Todd. Happy to be here. Let's talk, if you don't mind, about this event, and then we'll sort of back it up. I'd like to talk about the Tom Waddell event and then tell people why they should be there. Because Tom Waddell, you can think of all the great pioneers, all of the great idea people, all of the great current celebrities that have come from Springfield College. And the name Tom Waddell, unless you take a fine-tooth comb and go through the annals of Springfield College history, you're not going to stumble upon Tom Waddell. What is it about, how did you end up finding about the story of Tom Waddell, and this became sort of something that you have, you've, you've taken on on purpose? Absolutely. I'm, one of my great passions is sort of finding history that has not been covered sufficiently. And Springfield College, fortunately, has given me some, some great material. Uh, the story of Martin Luther King's commencement speech at Springfield College in 1964 was in that category. Great, great story that there had not been much written about, so that's sort of a, a writer's dream to stumble yeah. upon something like that. And Tom Waddell is very much in that category, too. You're right, he's, n he's not a household name. We're looking to change that. I think he should be. Uh, this is a, one of the great heroes of Springfield College. You refer to him as a Renaissance man. I think that's right on target. This guy was a phenomenal athlete, a three-sport athlete in college in a rare trio of sports, football, gymnastics, and track and field. That's so, awesome. So good in track and field, as you mentioned, that he, nine years after he graduated, made the U.S. Olympic team in 1968 in the decathlon itself, you know, perhaps the most versatile challenge in sports, in Olympic sports anyway, took sixth in the world. Uh, so the athletic part of his heritage is remarkable, but it's only a tiny piece of the story. Years. This is in nine years, which means nine years we're talking about, uh, if, if he graduated at 22, we're talking about an Olympian who's, I mean, it would be great to be 31 again, but but a 31-year-old Olympian, that's not something to sneeze at. Not at all. In fact, that is quite old. You look at the people who won the gold medal in that event, they've been consistently people in their in their 20s. So at 31, I mean, that is a young man to us. Yeah, oh my but, God, yeah. <laughs> But uh, to an Olympic decathlete, um, it's, it's getting old. Uh, so that itself was pretty remarkable. And the fact that he was already a doctor at that point, that he was in the That's army, awesome. that he had been a paratrooper, <laughs> uh, that he had been That's... an outspoken critic of the war in Vietnam, wow. that he'd gone down to Selma in support of Martin Luther King's voting rights work in 1965. Uh, he had already lived a very rich life by the time he became an Olympic athlete. And this was just a warm-up act for a guy who, eight years later in 1976, would come out as gay in the most public way possible in People magazine. Wow. I mean, who did that at right, that point? Right, right. And then, you know, founded his greatest legacy, I believe, in 1982, six years later, uh, that, that is the Gay Games, a quadrennial festival of sports and the arts that has played out every four years since at venues all over the world. Uh, it just took place in Cleveland, Ohio, Cleveland and Akron this past summer. Uh, so has attracted sometimes over 10,000 athletes from over 50 countries. The, uh, now, you know, a lot of kids listening, we've got a couple of interns here and everything, they're used to uh, hearing things all the time when, when uh, somebody famous comes out as gay. Paint the picture of what that was like when he did that in the 70s. I mean, I, this is not just like, this was an extremely brave thing to do in the 70s. 
without doubt, it's a different world. It's, it's not necessarily easy now. There are still obstacles, but you're absolutely right. We have just, you know, just within this last year, we've seen the stories of, you know, Michael Sam, Jason Collins, you know, Derek Gordon up the road at UMass. Uh, so this is part of the culture now. It certainly was not in 1976. Uh, 1976 was the bicentennial year. Uh, it was not a year in which there was a great awareness of a gay culture throughout much of America. And certainly an Olympic athlete to come out so publicly at that time was absolutely extraordinary. And at Springfield College, you know, I don't think we knew institutionally really what to do with Tom Waddell at that, that point. I've had a number of interesting conversations with some of his classmates from the class of 1959, uh, three of whom are, are going to be on a panel discussion at this event next Friday. Uh, local guys, great stories, and they had to really sort of reconfigure their worldview pretty dramatically when their good friend and this exceptional athlete, Tom Waddell, came out as gay in 1976. Of course, we're talking with Marty Dobrow. He's here talking about Tom Waddell Day. Uh, celebrating the life of Tom Waddell, and it's going to be on Friday, April 17th, 9 a.m. to noon. Um, and, you know, when you talk about uh, 1976, when, when this man did this, and he went on to accomplish so many incredible things, and and, and being a homosexual in, in this day and age is, who cares? And it still makes headlines today. When you mentioned Derek Gordon, and, you know, when he came out, and uh, an NBA basketball player that came out, and, why do you think in, in, in the world of sports it's still making news? Well, I think there has been phenomenal progress, but there is still a long, long way to go. I mean, we've seen it certainly just, you know, in recent events, you know, laws in Indiana and Arkansas that, you know, have been in, the, been in the news. How welcoming are we really? There are many countries in the world where it is not safe or even legal to come out as gay. And we live in Western Massachusetts, a very progressive part of the country. This is not the world in its, yeah, it's entirety. Not representative. It's, it's not right. representative. <laughs> and uh, I agree that I think it would be great if we were to come to a day where there would not be a need for something called the gay games. And I think we're we're, we're headed in that direction, which is fantastic. And I think this is a, this is a celebration of that. And we have, you know, Rob Kearney, who's a iconic presence on the Springfield College campus who is an internationally renowned strong man, great speaker, uh, you know, just an ex exceptional young man who came out as gay just this, this past year in sort of the modern version of People Magazine, if you will, Facebook. And it, it became, <laughs> it was amazing, it was sort of a modern media story. And you know, I mean, Kyle, you'll appreciate this because you have so much more savvy in this stuff than I do. It was just this, this avalanche of publicity that came about as a result of one Facebook post. You know, a, a slew of friend requests, uh, media interview requests from places Perez, like TMZ, Perez, Perez Hilton, Hilton retweeting. Yeah, it was on his front page. Unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, this just happened overnight. And, yeah. and Rob took this whole thing in stride. Uh, and he is just really an exceptional voice for being true to yourself, um, for social justice, and I think is a, a, you know, should be a great attraction to the modern generation of students about this issue. And Rob Kearney, it's great. I mean, you look at this program, Friday, April 17th, 9 a.m. to noon, up at Springfield College. You can go to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash average Joe's 1450, and get a, a, your true arms around this program. We posted a link to uh, the Springfield College website story. Um, it is, you look at it, Rob Kearney gives the keynote address at 11, 10 a.m. So this is not a day's commitment. This is truly drop in, grab a coffee, listen to some history, uh, hear Rob Kearney, a, a true pioneer in, in 2015, um, talk about uh, his, his story, Tom Waddell, a pioneer in the 50s. I do want to go to maybe the, because so much of what, uh, so much of what Tom Waddell did was in the public spotlight, right? I mean, it was the 1968 Olympics talking out in favor of John Carlos and Tommy Smith's Black Power so that it was going to Selma it was, and marching with Martin Luther King. It was being a physician and helping in maybe uh, you know, the, uh, the areas that, that weren't necessarily um, uh, upper middle class or upper class. But I want to talk about Tom Waddell's unfortunate end, which comes in 1987 uh, at the height of the AIDS um, epidemic. Um, he dies of AIDS in 1987. Um, I don't know the answer to this. This is not me tossing you a softball. But in 1987, dying of AIDS, 
was a reality for many of the people in the gay population. Um, the entire LGBTQ population was really struggling with it throughout the 80s. Um, can you talk about his ending and whether or not that was also a, uh, did, w was that another moment of advocacy for him? Was, it, was that public? In some ways it was public and it was sort of remarkable as everything else in his life really seemed to be. His last words uh, were exactly these, this should be interesting. No, one, of really? the, one of the best last <laughs> words I think anyone has, has ever, <laughs> ever spoken. Uh, and Tom Woodall was surrounded by friends, by family. He has a very fa fascinating family story because he, Tom Woodall actually got married to a woman, Sarah Lewinstein, a lesbian athlete with uh -huh. whom he formed the gay games. He was looking to make the gay games as inclusive as possible in 1982, reached out to the lesbian community in San Francisco, met this woman named Sarah Lewinstein, very fine athlete herself. They became very close, talked about their own family stories, their desire to have a child someday, conceived the child in the most conventional way possible. And <laughs> then, uh, and so Jessica Waddell Lewinstein is very much a product of the gay game. Uh, oh, and I then like in 19, well 1986, where Gay Games 2, she was there. You, there's a great clip from 2020 that we're going to be showing at this Tom Waddell Day, shortly before Tom Waddell died of AIDS, um, that shows Jessica Waddell at age three. I've spoken to her since. She just got it within the last, I think, about a year and a half ago, she had turned 30. She got a package in the mail, a box that someone said, these, I believe, belong to you. Oh my God. It's a package of cassette tapes, and she's a modern woman. What do you do with a cassette tape? Oh, yeah. She didn't have anything that could play it. Went I could take her, her right in my car. <laughs> there we go. Went to her mom's house. No one was home. Put it in the old boom box, lay down on the floor, and listened to her dad talking to her. She didn't know about wow. the existence oh, wow. of these tapes. So, you know, talking to this then three-year-old girl, oh knowing God. he was about to, to die. And so it, that's a pretty remarkable that's and a poignant, knows. poignant story, too. And so... We're going to have a wow. video message from Jessica Waddell Lewinstein um, at this event wow. as well. So it's just on every level, it's just a remarkable story. And I think it's just high time, you know, at Springfield College in Western Massachusetts, in America, in the world, that we really claim Tom Waddell as a hero. Now, why is it that every time you're on this show and, and you come with, with some amazing story, I'm, I'm thinking, why isn't like this guy, uh, you know, like connected with Hollywood? I mean, so many of these stories that you come out with would just make such fantastic movies. This would make a good movie, yeah, I agree. No, I mean, every time you that, come in here with something, I mean, I would go, this should be a movie. Well, I appreciate that. I mean, I, you know, I always Write have the an, an appetite for a good story. This is a good story, and it's it's uh, one I think people will really enjoy if we can come up and see it next Friday. Now, did you have you talked to a lot of people that knew him? Because when you look at the things that you talk about uh, Tom was involved with, uh, uh, he was a paratrooper, yeah. but you know he was very against the Vietnam War, as many people were. Mm -hmm. He he fought for uh, African Americans' rights. I mean, obviously, I'm sure you know, I'm sure he was a big advocate for gay rights. I mean, the the gay games. How did he have time to do all these things? That's a great question. <laughs> no, I, I mean, it was really a remarkable life, packed into 49 years. He did not live to to be an old man, but this was just someone who had a incredible amount of energy and conviction and passion. And, and there's Here's one other remarkable story about Tom Waddell to throw into the mix, and another reason why this should, in fact, be a movie. Why did Tom Waddell become a doctor? He was a gymnast at Springfield College, as I had mentioned to you, very close to another member of the gymnastics team, very good, very good friend. Uh, one day, this was at the old Judd Gym, yep. and they were there before practice go on what were called the flying rings at the time, and his friend was practicing, did some sort of twisting movement on this, lost control of these rings, went flying, landed on his head. Oh, yeah. Tom Waddell raced over to him, you know, the head started to swell, hemorrhaging on the brain. They brought him to the hospital. He died that night. And Tom Waddell, who was a PE major at Springfield College, his friend was pre-med. Tom Waddell decided that he had to become a doctor. Wow. In tribute to his friend. Oh and my so, God. and it's just, and to me, he it was, was service. Absolutely, to me, it is. It was so symbolic because you're exactly right. His life was service. His life was about healing. And even now, all these years after his death, I think this message of healing is still very strong. Well, I mean this in the way that I'm saying it. This should be interesting. Tom Waddell Day, <laughs> celebrating a life of humanics and diversity. Friday, April 17th, 9 a.m. to noon at the Flynn Campus Union on the campus of Springfield College. Starts at 9 a.m. with coffee and pastries. 
goes through. Marty, you'll be speaking. You'll be giving the introduction at 9.15. There's a film tribute. There's a history of the gay games, a panel discussion, including Waddell's classmates, some local 